particular building blocks contain a specific atom at the center of the building block, and also clarify the number of single bonds versus lone pairs in the building block. As a result of these two specifications, we also see a formal charge in the building block. If there is one as a result of the specific atom in the building block and the number of formal electrons located at the atom. We've seen a lot of these already. What I want to do in this video is move from the generalized building blocks to the particular building blocks. You'll often be reasoning in the opposite direction from a specific structure to its generalized counterpart, but my hope is that by showing you how this works in the generalized to particular direction, you'll see how particular structures can be instances of the broader patterns. When we place a specific atom at the center of a building block, we need to consider the number of lone pairs versus single bonds located on the building block and think about the formal charge as well. The resulting structure which contains all of these elements is what we refer to as a particular building block and it's for example what we looked at in the first video of this series when we talked about structural analogies. Just to give an example of this, we can take the building block shown here, which is the two electron pair domain building block with two double bonds, and think about adding, for example, a carbon atom at the center of this with the two double bonds like so. Now, the carbon in this structure has a formal electron count of four, and so its formal charge is neutral, and so we can simply leave the building block as is. But if we add a different atom to the center, the situation changes. So for example, if we add a nitrogen atom to the center rather than carbon, now we still have the nitrogen flanked by two double bonds, and in fact the formal electron count is still four. You know, again showing us how each of these is an instance of a broader structural pattern in the generalized building block, but now since the neutral nitrogen atom has five valence electrons, we're dealing with a formal charge of plus one in this structure on the left. Even so, what we can say about both of the particular building blocks is that they're instances of this generalized building block. That means that these two structures behave analogously in molecules in which they appear. And just because I can't resist giving an example of this, two molecules in which these building blocks appear are the NO2 cation, which we'll see in nitration reactions much later in the semester, and carbon dioxide, which is identical to the NO2 cation, just with the replacement of carbon for nitrogen. Both of these are Lewis acids, and this building block, with the central atom flanked by two double bonds, helps us see why. Now let's start listing the particular building blocks that correspond to each generalized building block. When we do this, to help us constrain the possibilities, we're going to keep the formal charge of the atoms at most plus or minus one. Organic molecules don't display formal charges greater than plus or minus one, so this makes sense. When we arrange the tetrahedral building block so that it has one single bond and three lone pairs, we end up with particular building blocks corresponding to neutral halogen atoms. Things like fluorine, which has three lone pairs and a single bond, or chlorine with three lone pairs and a single bond as well, or bromine, or iodine, which I won't show. All of these have three lone pairs and one single bond, and they're all instances of this generalized building block. One that you may not have thought of is the anionic oxygen atom, which also has three lone pairs and one single bond, but is now formally negative because of the formal electron count here of seven versus six for a neutral oxygen atom. Particular building blocks that are instances of this one that contain two bonds are typical of oxygen. So for example, an oxygen with two single bonds and two lone pairs replacing oxygen with nitrogen gives rise to a building block with a negative charge on the nitrogen atom. And in some rare cases, you'll see a building block of the halogens with this same pattern where the halogen is formally positive and has two bonds and two lone pairs. This also is an instance of this two-bond tetrahedral building block. Three bonds in the tetrahedral building block is typical of nitrogen and amines. So the classic example here is nitrogen. I'll just draw this with three-dimensional information just to be crystal clear. We also see this for oxygen with a formally positive 
charge, since the formal electron count around oxygen is 5, and when carbon appears at the center of this building block, we see that the carbon ends up with a negative charge. Finally, the tetrahedral building block with four bonds around it and no lone pairs is the classic tetrahedral carbon building block, which includes a neutral carbon atom and four bonds, four single bonds, that point to the corners of a tetrahedron. You'll also see this in ammonium cations, where the carbon has been replaced by a nitrogen atom so that it's formally positively charged. We have two different generalized building blocks for the three electron pair domain case, and we're going to start with the one that obeys the octet rule, the eight electron building block, with a double bond and two single bonds or lone pairs. So the double bond will appear in all of these. When the double bond is accompanied by two lone pairs, oxygen is the most commonly found atom in this situation. But we do, in some cases, also see nitrogen here, although the nitrogen in this case would have a charge of negative one formally. Replacing one of those lone pairs in the building blocks we've got there with a bond leads to the two bond case. And so, for example, we can have an oxygen with a lone pair and a bond, which is now formally positive. And this building block is typical of neutral nitrogen, which is involved in a double bond. We also see carbon in this building block in an anionic situation. And finally, this building block in a three bond situation is the classic sp2 hybridized carbon. And we also see nitrogen in this role with a formal positive charge. All of these are instances of this generalized building block with a double bond and two single bonds or lone pairs. The six electron building block bearing three electron pair domains can have one, two, or three bonds. This building block violates the octet rule, so these species tend to be quite reactive, but we do see them at times in reactive intermediates. So for example, when the building block has one bond, this is a situation that we sometimes see for nitrogen because the formal electron count around nitrogen in this building block is five, and so this corresponds to neutral, a neutral nitrogen atom. This is an intermediate that's known as a nitrine, and it's actually quite rare, but I pointed out only to show an example of this building block in our system with only one bond. Two bonds and one lone pair involved in this building block is also relatively rare, but an interesting intermediate known as a carbene. So we replace nitrogen with carbon and one of the lone pairs with a bond to retain a neutral species. What's interesting about this is that the carbon in a carbene is neutral, but it lacks four bonds. It only has two bonds. The three bond case is by far the most common here because it corresponds to carbocations, which are a very important intermediate that we'll see throughout the course, actually, and boranes, which we'll also encounter. And so if we place a boron at the center of the three bond building block. Now we have a neutral situation since the formal electron count is three around that boron atom. And if we replace the boron with a carbon atom, since neutral carbon has four valence electrons, the formal charge here is positive. This is a carbocation, and this is known as a borane. With two electron pair domains, we can have what I call symmetric or asymmetric building blocks. The symmetric building block has two double bonds, and there are only two ways to do that. We've seen those before. I've gone ahead and drawn one out. That's the positive nitrogen at the center, or a neutral carbon at the center, characteristic of something like carbon dioxide. The asymmetric two electron pair domain building block gives us a single line to work with, and so we can have either a one bond or a two bond situation. In a one bond situation, we have a triple bond and a lone pair, and we saw that, for example, previously with nitrogen at the center, although we will also encounter this with oxygen at the center with a positive charge, and carbon at the center with a negative charge. When this building block has two bonds, in other words, the triple bond and a single bond, we're back into classic four bond territory again, and so the classic sp hybridized carbon shows up here. We also find positively charged nitrogen here, since the formal electron count around nitrogen is four, and neutral nitrogen has five valence electrons. And that's it. We've reached the end of the generalized building blocks. This slide just summarizes what we went through and lists particular building blocks with formal charges
between minus one and plus one for all of the six generalized building blocks that we've seen. I don't include this slide with the expectation that you should memorize what's here, only to help you see the structural connections between the particular and generalized building blocks and to make the point that we often think in the opposite direction here. We often see these structures in molecules and in order to make analogies we have to see the connections between related structures. Doing that, seeing for example that this building block and this building block are instances of the same generalized structure is the key to making structural analogies.